Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Seat Story Cup number five. My name's TJ. I'm joined by Purple and Zelay. What's up? Two best buds. Yeah, we're brothers. Forever. Forever. Cap of pride. Best buds forever. BB forever. There we go. That's what I, I like that. Yeah, we're about to jump into the second <laughs> match of Group B, I believe it is. Um, it's Econ versus Naaman. We saw uh, Eloise take down Frodan. Finally, somebody could defeat Frodan's Concede Shaman deck. Eloise must be, like, just the best player in the world. Yeah, yeah I think so. That To beat the Bog Creeper is just... In all seriousness, she's very good. It has to be it, yeah. And, you know, that's just more incentive to win this match because whoever loses it has to go and face Frodan. It has to face the Bog Creeper. You don't want to go up against the Bog Creeper. No. I'm, a, I'm assuming, creeper. regardless of lineup at this point, you should be just be banning the Bog Creeper. Yeah, just respect, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Too powerful. So for the Mulligans, Naaman's keeping, I assume, Mana Worm, Arcane Blast. Um, Maybe Arcane Blast isn't great against Druid. Oh, as a Druid, you probably are keeping Power World. Off really? Coin. Off coin. Just to play as a 3-2. Yeah, because of everything that kills it in the Mage deck, including Arcane Blast. But given the knowledge that it's not great to keep the Arcane Blast, maybe you keep the Power Laws. It's like a mind games kind of thing. But the Power Law is just so mediocre to play 3-2 on turn 2. It's not busted enough. Right. I feel uh, like it's pretty you, bad. You, I think, like, Living Roots, Wild Growth, Innervate, like, and if, Wrath, that's enough better cards to um, pitch the Power of the Wild. If, like, I, oh, oh, wow, wow what, a, what a keep. Uh, very interesting. But if you reverse, like, say Echo's going first, you go Power of the Wild, or Living Roots, Power of the Wild, it's really good, because the 1-3 doesn't just kill one of your 1-1s right. to start the game. So but we're in this scenario. Yeah, it's, like, a bit reverse. different. It's a little different, because it's, like, he has the coin. Did I even keep the Water Elemental? I didn't see that. Yeah, he kept the Water yeah, Elemental. He, he full capped. Yeah. And I think I just called it watermelon, but I mean, it sounds delicious. So watermelon mental. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept the blast. So I think that's like a really conservative blast. He's just like, I'm better than you, and this is just good enough. Well, yeah. Yes, that's good. Like, well, it's not I'm better than you. It's I like this matchup. I don't need a fantastic yeah, hand as long yeah, as I don't draw yaws. It's like I'll be I can fine. I can win with this very mediocre hand. Yeah, mediocre is all. Wow, these are some, that is an early yog. Nyman's got to be feeling, oh, he's bluffing. He mouses over the Arcane Blast as a bluff, like he's thinking about playing it. I mean, you play a 3-2 every time. Yeah, Could the bluff's blood. not very convincing, yep. is it? You also play Blood Mage Donos and... Yeah, you play literally Man anything number two. that's not absolutely idiotic, right? Yeah. It could be I guess he's trying to represent Frostbolt to the face, which sure. we have seen on turn two. The I don't thing know if is, it. hovering over the Arcane Blast is almost the same card as Frostbolt. Yeah, so you're kind of representing... You're showing yeah. him what card you have. Well... Yeah, you're in sure. a way. Yeah. If if if, if Echo's reading deep into the mind games, that Arcane Blast is now Frostbolt, which is the same thing. Right. So, but he's probably not reading deep into the mind games. Because why would you invest that much effort into, you know, trusting an opponent who's clearly sitting here trying to deceive you? Like we're all on that level where, I'm not. Oh, you're not. You're you're past that level. Purple okay. gets deceived. I like this wrath from Ecop, saving the coin, just dealing with the threats. Below that level or past that level it tends to be the same thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mirror image, pink face. Yeah, I like, I like this. It's just like... Seems right. You just kind of protect the wire room a little bit more. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on Temple Mage overall? Because I think this is the only Temple Mage left. Hot Form was in, but I think Hot Form just lost off stream. Oh, no, because he lost to Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan has it. But yep. what do you think of Temple Mage overall right now? I think it's a pretty solid deck. Uh, if there were more hours in a day, I would have spent more time on Temple I think it's Mage. Like, it's like at the bottom of the tier one list from for decks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things you can very reasonably consider bringing. It's got Yogg in it. It's like a good fifth deck in a best of seven. Exactly. But what's what's? I think what's really good about the deck is it definitely has the possibility to nut draw. Yeah. And that power level, having a, pa a power level on a deck is just like so important. Mm -hmm. uh, like a oh, maximum potential on a yeah. deck. Yeah. And it's, some decks just are like very solid, but the power level is just not there. Yeah. So. So this is an interesting turn. Living Roots, Bar of the Wall, it's really strong. Yes, it is. Were you looking at other plays? Uh, I mean, not once I saw that. You could play Fandral. Yeah, things could the happen. Teacher didn't die. We should probably do this. This seems... And this is why Ecop kept these cards, like, kind of with this plan in mind, I, I imagine. Yeah. Dodge the Fireball win? Yeah, sure. I mean, who keeps Fireball off the mulligan? Nobody. There we go. So, yeah. Eloise actually put, uh, she has the Arcane Explosion in her the uh, tech. Tempo Mage list. Yeah. I like Thalnos. Arcane Explosion because of all the tokens. Yeah, because you have Cold Sorcerer, you have Thanos, 
Yeah, it's so it deals sick. with one one boards and two two boards and you really build effectively. Your own, and you build your own consecrate, yeah. Yeah, Very exactly. Nice. You get two spell power guys. There's not even a card in the game that does that. You have five spell power minions in the deck. Yeah, with the drakes. Yeah. So you, you're saying that card can do six? Oh. Well, <laughs> it could. <laughs> there we go. Just Maximum much potential. Flame strike. <laughs> So are we playing Cabalist Tome and going face? Or yeah, we're, we're hoping for the Blizzard. Yeah, we're looking for Blizzard, maybe Into uh, Flame, Flame Strike. Strike. Yeah, we're not both. for much. I mean, Frost Nova Flame Strike might be... Okay. Whoa. Well, this is, like, super safe, I guess. Yeah, although, is safe safe or is it risky? Because when you're... It, it looks like Nyman's pretty far behind here, so he's playing safe is On kind board, of, he's behind three two twos. yeah. Playing... It's sort of like a consistent play, right? And so maybe consistent's not what you want when you're losing. From Echo's perspective now, I, I really would jam this Vandral. There's just, like, so many problems on the board already. The Fandral just adds, like, a major, major threat, more so than the Drake does, given you have the Nourish and the Feral Rage in your hand. And, and we have seen a lack of Fireball for the teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. he traded uh, I mean, the Water Elemental plus an Arcane Blast and a Ping for the teacher. If so. Naaman just goes Fireball your guy on turn six, nothing else, you win because you have three tutus. Right. Yeah. So. Although, I can't fault him for playing Azure Drake here. It costs super... five mana. Like, it's not bad at all. His mana utilization. Woof. Yeah. 100%. I think Naaman's goal here is just to try and survive long enough to play Yogg-Saron. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm going to believe. Yeah, it seemed like a reduced damage. I'm going to win later. Gun exactly, drink. yeah. That's so that's point. why he didn't go for the Cabal's Tome, because yeah. he just wanted to try and... Yeah, he, he, trusts, live. he trusts the Yogg more than the Tomb. Which I, I would. Seems correct, That's now that the, I think about it. Cabal's Tomb gives you three random spells in Yogg. your hand that don't get played that turn. Yeah, and Yogg just wins the game. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, at the very least, Yogg... It seems like math. At least kills you, so you don't have to concede. <laughs> Although, unfortunately for Nyman, his Yogg can get countered by Ecop's Yogg, so it's just not much hope anymore. Does that actually work? It Is might. That a thing? <laughs> Second Yogg always wins. Yeah. Not always. Because the... The Yogg that... Well, by your, lo your logic, you, if you, Yogg always wins... I feel like you're under 5% that your Yogg actually survives. So if your Yogg's still on the board, that means, like, his Yogg's probably going to kill himself, meaning your Yogg's probably going to win the fight. Okay, real talk, Ecop has, like, a difficult <laughs> turn here. He's going for Fandral, yeah, which no, he liked last turn, and the Hero Power, which saves a 2-2. Two -two yeah, that's fine. Cost of some life. He doesn't care too much about the life because he's still at 23, right. and the Temple Mage has no minions sticking to the board anytime soon. Yeah, Naaman needs to, like, hit a Frost Nova into, a, like, a Cone, and then Yogg. It's fine. Yeah. This is Cabal's Tome. This is textbook play cards that aren't in your deck situation. <laughs> the cards in your deck don't make you come back, so, yeah. He's, he's got this Yogg. He's still in it. Yeah, hey, start playing this game is not cards. over. Still need to buy two more turns, though, so... Uh, he actually thinks his deck has better cards. I well, mean, Fireball that, one, <laughs> that one is really good. I think those are literally the two best cards you could have drawn because they... It's the only two cards in the deck that uh, kill two minions for five mana. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was actually leaning towards playing the Blood Mage. Oh, Blood Mage, like Arcane, Blast. Arcane Blast. And Missiles. Yeah. And Pink. Missiles first. So you, you still always take care of the Fandral, and you kill the 2-2. Two -two. But And you still have the Fireball, oh, yeah. which That's, is like the yeah. better card in, in your hand. Yeah. That's actually really solid. It's, a, it's, cycle. it's a bit worse if you're playing on top deck in Flame Waker. Yeah. But... Uh, I, I found out recently, you actually don't get to choose what cards you draw. <laughs> That's how that works. Not Those every, were a bit what if every card draw mechanic in the entire game was Discover? Oh. That would be powerful. Whoa. Food for thought. I mean, fatigue would be much less of a thing. I want a new Hearthstone format. Yeah, no, it was Discover like three cards in your deck that were already in your deck. Oh, oh I see. And it put the other two so cards back. All, all be, oh, okay. And you got one. Oh, that okay. that the sounds one that like a magic mechanic. <laughs> sounds pretty sick. Yeah. I think it's in like a lot of card games. Yeah, because of magic. Yeah, that's true. It was the OG card game. All right, well, by the looks of it... Back up, getting a bit more mana so he can uh, go ahead and play that Scenarius next turn. Uh, looking towards innovating that hero power. Just take care of the Blood Mage. He doesn't want to trade with 2-1 into the Blood Mage, really. So at a least force name in the ping next turn. And he definitely wants to go face for four. And he has 200 bits, so yeah, this, this seems fine. The turn didn't feel strong, but Good enough. the way it goes sometimes, yeah. His position's still certainly strong. Yeah. Um, 
Only 14 life remaining for uh, Neiman here. That's a nice play. Mana Worm, Fireball, Ping, Mirror Image. Clear the when board. We played as Tomb, dude. Why is that in it's our after last... No, I mean, that's the way card draw cards are, right? First you play for yeah. tempo. Once you run out of good tempo plays, you play the card draw. Especially Cabal's Tome when sure. you're not looking for anything specific. But... You're just looking for value. Right, because you have no control over yeah. it. Yeah, when Christmas is coming up, there's like presents wrapped in your house. Okay. Like hiding in mom's closet. Right. You, you don't go there. open and try to like re repackage them. Yeah, you do. Yeah, exactly. That's the Cabalist Tome. <laughs> well, you want to you want to draw the cards and then put them back in? Well, no, you just want to take a sneak peek, and then if they suck, you do the other play. Which is concede? <laughs> 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 All right, so is it RNG package number one or RNG package number two? Uh, number two. The one on the right is better because it makes the number one even <laughs> more bigger. Right? Yeah. And you have time. Good. I mean, you're not going to die next And there's... Yeah. Oh! oh an RNG package number three You went into up. mom's closet, you unwrapped a, a present, and there was present, more presents inside of that present. That's, that's insane. That's just like insane. a Russian doll. How do you rewrap all those packages, though? <laughs> What's Spellbender do against Druid? There's <laughs> Wrath. That's like a Russian doll. Do you know what a Russian doll is? Those little, yeah, little yeah. toys that you take Packages. one out. Packages. They're made out of wood. I, I was thinking mail order. Okay, that's a doll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you can order them by mail. Sure. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> good save. This <laughs> Spellbender is just not a good card, so I think you go Tome again, right? Well, I mean, Tome costs four mana. Nope, Spellbender is a good card. Spellbender is uh, a really good card. Yeah. Damon just, like, favors doing things that aren't playing that card, eh? I liked the Cabalist Tome this time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought Cabal, I thought Neiman's play was made a lot of sense up until this turn. You're but pinging you're... the 2 ones pretty useless, considering we have a Blizzard in hand. Yeah, for sure. And I, I would have pinged the Snorri's, actually. Yeah, that would have been better. Maybe or he wants the face on the Yogg one. Maybe he wants the best board state possible for Yogg, but Spellbender doesn't really help your board state that much. Like, what direct spells are there that would target what, minions? What it does, like wrath what only. it does do is just swipe. Use your opponent. Oh, swipe, yeah. And when your opponent has a lot of cards, your 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 turns already a bit more difficult. Oh, you have yeah. Lots of options, and then there's this secret element, and you can't figure out what the, what it is because you played. Damon just went ahead and played the worst. Card. Yeah, you play weaker cards to test for secrets. Yeah. So you're not going to make your strongest play yeah, because so, you're afraid. So Naaman actually kind of just limits Egg Ops turn. Oh, yeah. It's smart, the yeah. Most powerful. But he could do that in a future turn where it's more mana efficient. Sure. Unless he just wants to yog. Unless, but it immediately it reduces the next turn for Egg Ops, which is like the, the, the immediate relevant. turn is like the most relevant turn. Yeah. Sure. And he can actually go Tome and Blizzard next turn, anyways. Yep. And lots of Sorcerer's Dust. Which is fairly likely. Yeah. I, although, like, can't get raft or mulched. Can get feral rage though. No, you just hear about the mana worm. The oh. feral rage is actually going to be for armor here. Like it? Yep. Tank up. At heart, everyone just actually just wants to be a warrior. Warrior's a good class. I, I feel like this is gonna be another turn where we actually don't see Cabalist Tome. Yeah, you like Drake Blizzard better. Spell damage is pretty relevant, finishing off the Meyer Keeper, yeah. extra damage on well, the scenarios. Azure Drake's very consistent. Cabalist Tome is the mystery box. Right. So, yeah, how often so do you need to get something that affects this turn? Well, all the you, you, like one mana spells. The most amount of the spells are just centered around three, right? So when you have one mana left with the sorcery, you can play two. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not that good. Yeah. Uh, the Shatter would have been disgustingly good, though. Oh, yeah, it would be one mana. I know there was like a Reddit thread. Uh, I, I usually why is shatter I, two mana. I, I, it's one mana. So he kept going for Drake's Shatter, wipe so, here, you know. and it's going to go into that spellbender. So the Azure Drake's going to survive at a four two. What does he think it is right now? Like ice block? I mean, he just doesn't know. Do you just swipe upstairs, play around it. It's still going to take out. <laughs> it, it's still going to take out the sources of Reddit. It does the same thing except you push more damage. Well, it's pretty good to get rid of that spellbender. He has a mulch in hand. <laughs> yeah, that was a sentence. Yeah. All right, is it Yogg time? Uh, well, if he picks up any... Uh, actually, he needs, like, you, you exactly have... Frostbolt to be able to remove... Oh, no, Blast. Oh, yeah, Blast Forge. can spell power. Fireball. No, he can't Fireball because he needs to ping the Scenarius. No, he can Fireball oh, the Scenarius. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, he could. <laughs> <laughs> or he could even Polymorph Boar. Uh, dude, that leaves a Huffer on the board. And you're at 12, like... Druid doesn't actually play that much burst anymore, but you're at 12. Yeah. Yeah, you should probably just fireball and trade, right? 
It seems correct. Or you just make the counter spell play and just confuse Ek Hop some more. Ooh, I don't know about that one. Yeah, confusing Ek Hop can sometimes be a pretty good line of play. Yeah. Diamond likes consistency. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I've gotten that out of him. I like confusing Ekhoff, like, inside of and outside of Hearthstone. Yeah, you just like mind games in general, I think. Yeah. All right, so, uh, should probably 10 5, right? He's at 12, so that's so playful. You squeeze into Hero Power. I feel like the thing about a 10 5 is it has 5 health instead of 10. I like setting up playful. And that's like a smaller number, which makes it more vulnerable to stuff like Arcane Blast, Fireball, Frostbolt, Arcane Missiles, Flame yeah. Waker. Yeah. yeah. They're equally vulnerable to Polymorph Huffer. Yeah, it's just Gaster Biased. So, also, also, I would probably 10 5. It's really, <laughs> it's really interesting that Naaman was. Oh, 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 25%. Uh oh. Oh, wow. Huffer. That That's was a disaster brutal. for Naiman. He's been spending all game trying to avoid RNG events and to, to see it happen like this. Oh, that's you, you gotta embrace it. <laughs> you, you avoid the RNG, and then RNG just says, No, I'm not gonna reward you now. It's a funny game because I think both players have missed lethal for like three or four turns in a row via Yogg. Yeah. I mean <laughs> in, in one way or another. <laughs> uh, and Naiman's spells are actually getting up there. He's played like a lot of them. 12 plus spells, I think, yeah. at this point. Akob's running up the, the spell count as well. Like, uh, just like cycling the right wild growth. Like, yeah, just, he just yeah. gets, gets you up there. And uh, he's used both his, both of his both, innervades. Both these decks are have more spells than minions by a large margin. Yeah. And they have spells that create spells. Yeah. Uh, Akob's going to go ahead and play Violet Teacher, then check for Ice Barrier. I like the sequence because if it's Mirror Entity, you were actually going to swipe. And Wrath. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll actually like checking for entity first. Yep. And so it just trades because it's a 4 1, it can just get pinged. The face damage is relevant, but. Is it time? No, I think you play. Oh! oh. No, what? Oh, praise you Oh, baby, the animation. Who gets the mark of nature? Do we actually get to see? Yes, Yogg gets it. That actually scared me. All right, a lot. we're two for two on targeting. On a side note, one Pyroblast ends the game. Oh! oh! Wombo combo. That didn't. Oh, there, there were zero drops. That's just not very good. The more you I know. Mean, oh! That's disgusting. There's, there's no way. <laughs> the second one doesn't matter that much because it's already a full board, right? The second death it's rattle. still pretty funny, though. Okay, yeah. Jackie Chan would actually just be proud. Did you? Oh, my goodness. All right, good well, that doesn't matter. Lucky. Well, here comes the counterattack. All right, let's see if Yogg truly counters Yogg. I think let's, it does. Let, let's test uh, DJ's theory on the second Yogg is better. Second Yogg is always better. <laughs> that's going to be hard to top. Yeah, that's that's a rough one. If I know Yogg, he likes to one-up. Uh, All right, we're Yogg. Something just got fisted. All right, so far, way worse. Well, it's, no, not it's early in well, the game. Oh. Give it time. Oh, we're helping our opponent. Where's that hand. going? Give him more power. Why really not? important to get that North Shark Clara off the board. Fork it up. Eventually, we're getting through this. <laughs> Are we? Yeah, look at this. We might. We need a blizzard, a flame strike. Oh, well, we got to remove them all individually. One yeah. by one. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. he starts. Oh, no. Uh, oh, oh hey. that's rid of the secret. That's Backstab. Yeah, that's See? A good yeah. One. Yeah. one by yeah. one. That wasn't too relevant. And that oh. was a good one. All right, now he's. You want to like... hit the death rattles first. So that... okay. Oh, he's dead. All right, yeah. my theory's bad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he just needed a couple more spells. That's it. Yeah, I mean, unlucky. Yeah. Well, that was an exciting game. Oh, well, Nyman played his Yogg a little bit that, better. That was a pretty standard game of Hearthstone where the first 16 turns didn't matter. Yeah. And then uh, two players both played Yogg, and that decided the game. <laughs> yeah. I like how Nyman's, like, taking notes. He has yeah. this piece of paper, like, game one. My Yogg is better. My Yogg is better. <laughs> he, like, actually draws, like, a detailed sketch of Yogg's yeah. run over yeah. the course yeah. of the game. Game, game two. Will my Yogg be yeah. better? <laughs> game two. Mulligan for Yogg? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Keep Yogg. Yeah. Yes. I mean, seemed pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. e -Cop has got to be feeling pretty bad about that one. He had the lead yeah, for, like, that I, whole I, game. I was actually uh, discussing with what Scott here just before this uh, lead strategy in Conquest, which uh, traditionally is actually just... Uh, Besides psychology, it doesn't matter in Conquest which deck you lead with, right? Right. Yeah. But now I'm on this theory that 
Because of the psychological factor, you should always lead with your Yogg decks. Just to tilt your I opponent? Think, I think that's actually a big mistake. I think one of the most important things you can do when you're queuing contest and conquest is to not always queue the same thing. The most important thing is to not be predictable. If you're predictable, you're exploitable. So you should play four Yogg decks so you avoid that problem. There we go. <laughs> now that's a strat. Purple's on to something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've seen these Yogg lineups. It's uh, what? Like Yogg Mage, Yogg Druid, Yogg Hunter. Every day. And then maybe a Yogg Control Warrior. Just ask Jackie line. Chan. He's got like Yogg, 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 Nazoth Paladin. There we go. Yep. I don't yeah, know where it fits Yogg in. Druid, so. Yeah. I actually tried Yogg Paladin. Secret Yogg Paladin. Mm -hmm. Secret Yogg Paladin. Yeah. Well, you do get a lot of secrets, right? Yeah, you, usually you, you play some secrets. The, like, the thing you is, play you, want, you, want, champions. you want those to come off challenger, though. But yeah, but I you, guess you always end up playing them anyways. Yeah. yeah, you always end up playing them early. You have yeah. you have divine favor because you end up emptying your hand really and, quickly. And of course, the famous Yog Dru or Yog Zoo was spreading menace. Yes, the famous yes. Uh, TJ Sanders special. Yeah, the top, Yog top ten legend, right? Uh, top 25. Top 25. Don't give me too much credit. Yeah, I mean, Sorry. come on. It's not that good. There was like five <laughs> articles posted. Like, look at look at TJ's Yogg Warlock. You yeah. should definitely play this, guys. You should definitely play this. And actually, tweet at me when you're playing it and at what rank and the exact time that you queue up so I can queue up again. <laughs> yeah, I wanna, because I want to see how you're doing. Yeah, yeah I want to play guy, the TJ. Spreading Menace. Not because I want to beat it or anything. I want to no. play the Spreading Menace Zoo Mirror. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, I'm in all right, we didn't see Torch last game. Right. Torch and uh, Damon's deck. I think everyone full mulligans looking for cheaper, better early plays. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Naaman. No. Yeah, Wait, no, 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 no. Naaman was actually just looking for the Yogg. That's any god like, there. He's actually just smiling a little on the inside. Yes. Yeah. Got this like, locked well, up. Well, we just got to get there now, guys. <laughs> we win. Naaman has the same facial expression all the time, though. That's the exact same face he had when he won the Europe Championship. Yeah. Wow. Winner. I'm, I'm sure it was happy. Yeah, exactly that face. That's his happy face. It's also his sad face and his angry face. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of his face. So if you coin Sorcerer's Apprentice Arcane Missiles, you push three damage You're this turn. What do you think? DJ, I'm, I'm going to try to make... He's <laughs> always like trying to analyze. <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and try to make Naaman laugh this about. Like, I'm going to get a smile out of it. Good him. luck. Dude. You'll tell a joke and then he'll tell like a funnier joke maybe, maybe, and not even break a smile. Did maybe you were trying to tell him jokes, but your jokes weren't that funny too. My jokes are pretty bad. <laughs> I have dad jokes. Those are good. I'm not even a dad. Are you Get sure? Ready. I'm sure I have puppy. Ah, close enough. Yeah, new puppy. All right, so the playing out three two. Whoa, Acro Shaman missed all his one drops Both and all his two drops. Are just Failing at the early game. Yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's a three two, so yeah, point, less point Damon. <laughs> All right. So uh E cop okay, yeah, it is. Oh, that is really good. Curves right Curving, into Feral Spears. Yeah, or Lava Burst Face. Yeah, depending that's on also which an direction you want to go in. Sometimes wide, sometimes deep. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend wide. Alright, so torch or frost. Do you want to draw a fireball? Uh, no, but I do want to play Torch instead of Frostbolt because I just, just use the worst card out of my hand. Yeah. I want to have a two mana you, deal. You will uh, actually a... just always make the most mana efficient play. Yeah, I mean, it's much easier than thinking. Yeah. And it's usually correct. 50 eh, 50. No. <laughs> Either correct or it's not. All right. So, uh, Echop setting himself up to, first of all, discount out the things from below. Second of all, leave the Doomhammer option open for next turn. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't mind this at all. That seems absolutely but. correct. All right, so flame maker missiles. This, this turns like really complicated. I think it's gonna be coin frostbolt. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we don't really. Oh, need and you get both totems. Yeah, because you don't need to coin Yogg usually. A lot of times you like uh, wait on Yogg a long time. Yeah. So we don't really need. Um, Saving coin for Yogg seems very ambitious. Yeah, we just don't need coin for any particular point other than right now. Yeah. Especially no. Tempo Mage is the deck that can survive the longest without using Yogg. You know? Because they have the most direct removal. Naaman plays, like, really, really conservatively. We went over this last game, right? Mm -hmm. Yet he brings Tempo Mage. That's, like, so... Maybe he just has a tremendous amount of respect for the power level of the deck. Now, here yeah. he plays off curve, and it makes sense, right? Because Water Elemental is just so threatening against and, that Doom Hammer. Yeah, and Azurix is fragile compared to, like, the 6th Elf Water Elemental. Yeah. 
Um, he's hovering over that things from below. A few options here. It's the lava burst face tank. The water elemental is actually a reasonable line. Go face for two first. Yeah. 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 I like the thing from uh, it contests the board efficiently. So one of the one of the reasons I actually kind of favored that play is Tempo Fireball. Mage. It, Fireball, sure, but Tempo Mage just doesn't actually have that many minions. Mm -hmm. So eventually, just, they just kind of run out of minions, and it, yeah, it's you, you put yourself in a good spot when you start like just killing all their minions. This feels really bad for Naaman. Um, like the the level of overkill he just put into that thing from below is yeah. a lot. Well. We'll just this spell power, he put five in. Yeah. We'll this spell power, he put seven power. in. I mean, he is sort of still in a reasonable position, so it shouldn't feel bad in that respect. Yeah, and uh, Akop is going to get blown up by Flamestrike. There's no way around it. It's going to be a, a Feral Spirit's Flame Tongue. I guess the Argent Square comes down over Totem. Given he's already played one things from below, the Toteming makes a bit less sense than that. And he's so far... Here it is, like seven going into eight mana, so the things from below price is like a bit less relevant. Mm -hmm. So when you say Ekop's gonna get blown out by Fame Strike, what you mean is from Ekop's perspective, he has no choice but to risk losing to yeah, Flame Strike. Gonna, yeah. yeah, there's gonna be a lot of minions on Flame Strike if, uh, if Naaman ha happens at it. Oh, well, he takes like the middle ground approach. Okay, that's I like that interesting. Lava burst. And he's gonna go ahead and kill the water on the play, I think. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He'd definitely Flame Strike on his mind, and yeah, it was. Gonna flame tongue and leave the Drake there, but that, that seems nice. So flame wake arcane intellect, intending to arcane missiles. Yeah. A total of seven shots. That's seven shots, and there's six, eight, nine, ten health and minions on the board. So he's likely to kill one thing, but and not very likely to kill two things. There's two. Okay. Not very good. Oh. Well, no so shots. All of the damage is fairly relevant. Yeah. 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 Um, I that play just 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 kind of like said, TJ, don't talk about probabilities. I'm going to do what I want. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. You like totem, uh, flame tongue totem here and trade in the 2 1? Yeah, it's so likely your opponent There's actually. There's also just flame mage faceless it, trade two guys in. Yeah, it's just so likely that your opponent actually has fireball by now, given, so uh, the given there's two in his deck and one a torch got cycled in. So, yeah, I like this play. Uh, you probably need, you should probably be going wide. Indeed. So that's uh, so that's 15 damage. If you draw another fireball, you have lethal here. If you just go, go for it. Ooh. Safe play though. That's so. This is definitely going to be the torch for three. But where I does he go? Flame tongue. Did not that's, love this mana worm. I think I wanted to play mana worm with flame strike next turn. I it does contest the two two. Why did you do this turn? Just ping. Yeah, just save it. Just uh, the, the mana worm actually is like kind of like. I the, think. I, the Mana Worm's like kind of awkward on board right now, you it's, know? It's taking heat. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right about that. It's like a Doomhammer charge, and there's only two left, so you want to be saving those kind of for Rock Butter. And the 2 2, or both Doomhammer charges. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty happy. Yeah, if you go like Torch Pink Face, you kind of um, strongly represent the Flame Strike, so then yeah. ACOP's not playing around. And your play might actually just be like something like say, you have two Fireballs in, fit, in hand, right? Your opponent's a 22, you can get them to 10. Then you have Yogg. That's not really how you that's want to not, do it. That's not how Naaman would do it. No. That's and I don't think that's how Naaman should do it either. No. I think he's right. So the 7-7 seven, is pretty nice here. I think you should probably kill the Matterhorn, especially like just how you've been playing this game. Yep. And just going to Lightning Storm his one minion. Uh, Ekob knows there's just not that many minions type of match. And A lot of times you want to storm the Mirror Image turn, but we already saw the Mirror Image, or one of them anyways. Yeah. Well, you still have the Doom Hammer for damages. If, you, if you're worried about, like, the 7-7 seven, seven going face. Fireball seems appropriate. Yeah, it's actually, like, a awkward turn because you're basically using all of your resources left. Flamestrike is going to find a target, but much later on. So he has to use both of his wow. burn spells here. Wow, even with the Flamestrike, he's just, just like, he just doesn't want to take two. He's going to play around like a double rock fighter lethal. Have we seen a rock fighter yet? Well, he's just committing to playing for a longer board control style yeah. game rather than yeah. trying to burn out Ecop. Binley's Which... actually just absolutely insane here. Especially if you can get a light tap. Bin Binley is like actually the most late game card in a shaman deck. Yeah, it's funny how that works. Yeah, cost one. But all those are bad. pretty bad. Druid gives you a bit of extra damage with that Doomhammer. 
but are you willing to attack? The Doom Hammer is like, depends. Are you going to draw Doom Hammer next turn? That's pretty unlikely, but looks like he's going to do it. Push six, put uh, Naaman to 12. Doesn't... Naaman's in excellent shape here. Yeah, That's... absolutely. He might be able to win this game without Yogg. Just flame strike. Well, against no cards in hand, the flame strike does look good, and he keeps drawing these fireballs. <laughs> on a side note, had he gone like all face, he would have won on the. Yeah. He would have just burned him out. But, but it, it was kind of unlikely. There weren't that many fireballs left to draw. It was what, two? Two. One regular, two. one normal. Yeah. And there wasn't enough time for him to draw like a frost bolt and turn that into like a lethal, so. This turn here is like. Take for word frag up, just one a turn. But imagine if it was it's, steady shot. If it was steady shot, it would be much better. Imagine if it was life tap. Life tap would have been very nice as well. So the way Naaman has been playing the series, and I feel turn. like this guy is getting fireballed. Yeah, every time. I mean, he fireballed a 2-3. He's not going to fireball a 3-4 now that his opponent's out of That's just, like, that's just a better target. Yeah. All right, so Ecop needs second Doom Hammer. Whoa, there it is. That's a big draw. And so now that, he has that's to That's a two-turn clock, now right? He, he, Honestly, the way Naaman's been playing, he trusts his own deck more than your gene card, so... Palantless Pink? No. Yeah. He, he knows the Yuck. He knows. What what is, what is, I wouldn't put it past in his, him. What does Thanos Pink get him. you that would... There's it, one mirror Cabalist image. Cabalist Home, mirror image. Yep. Oh, no. yeah, it's Yogg. Easiest Yogg of your life. He's, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it, yeah. That's, Naaman is a very conservative player. Hello! Oh, he Thanos is first. Yeah, you combo to get four on the Eviscerate. Five with the spell power. That, I don't... I think that's what you want to do. You're at five. Praise Yogg. I think um, it's one extra targeting play, which is sort of a bad thing because you want to be able to healing touch yourself or no, nothing. And it came up. Hands yourself. Oh, there's the Doom. Wait. All right, four damage. To oh, space. he's at one. Uh, okay. Uh, that he has target. mana somehow because his cards so are green. probably Innervate. Oh, that's not armor. No, he's just that TJ. Uh, oh yeah, the cards turn green. That when was you die. also my experience yeah. in this tournament. The Yogg giveth <laughs> and the Yogg taketh away. Yogg so, Almighty. Two ga both games now decided by Yogg in the series. And the question yeah. is, does yeah. does Naaman have an or Yogg deck? No. I guess that game wasn't decided by Yogg. That game was like Naaman lost, but Yogg was his last ditch effort. So that was just Ecop winning, right? Yeah. And Yogg was just played his last ditch effort. Yeah. So. Uh, now, Naaman did have the option to play more aggressively, in yeah, which case absolutely. he would have won. But it doesn't mean it was the correct play. No, it's, it's really results oriented it's, thinking. Yeah, absolutely. And bad Yogg. And it's just so unlikely that cop actually draws hit, that Doom Hammer. Rips yeah. the second Doom Hammer. Yeah. The Doom Hammer gave him what, like 10 damage or something? Oh. I mean, it's two from 12, the hero power, but the hero power two, six, 12. 12 damage. Yeah. But the, two of the hero hits. power damage is coming anyways. So kind of 10. 10. Yeah, 10. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. So 1-1 one, one now, and Naaman's Temple Mage is out of the way. So we're going to move into Zoo versus Aggro. Shop. That's a really interesting hand from that cup. This, this matchup tends to be pretty Zoo favored, but the Lightning Storm so balances Lightning Storm. out. Yep. I think with that cup's hand, he's got to be favored here, even without looking at Naaman's hand and, and seeing that it's a little bit weak. Yeah. Um, Ecop's it's on the high end of things. A, a little bit weak. That's really weak. Well, he has a one and a two. It's not suboptimal one, suboptimal two. Yep. Yep. It does and get punished against, by everything. Uh, against loses to Starch, Spire, one loses to Finley, loses to Tunnel Shrog. The two one loses to everything. Yep. Except nothing. Uh, well, if you draw a second so. Abusive Sergeant, it can deal with Coin Totem Golem. Yeah. Sometimes, that's, that's a good point. Sometimes it even actually loses with against um, Coin Totem. So this is Knife Juggler face for two, and what does the Shaman have to punish as hard as possible? Uh, Tunnel Trog Lightning Storm. Trog Bolt. Sorry, Tunnel Trog Bolt, yeah. Yeah, Trog Bolt. Clear the board, develop a 2-3. It's pretty gross. Using additional mana is actually only a Druid thing. Yeah, and it looks like Nyman's just stuck with his hand of cards that play well when they're supported, and, and none of the cards are supported yeah. at all. Like, he needs to have board control for these cards to be effective, and he just doesn't have it. Yeah. Doomhammer, by the way, I think is a really good pickup for Shaman here. If you survive the early terms, Doomhammer is one of the best cards against you because there's just so many little minions that die to an attack yeah. for two. A lot of your cards are really good when you're winning already. Yeah, but okay. Doomhammer is one of the best. Doomhammer is good when the game is, like, even. TJ, have you ever played it? A four mana seven seven. Yeah, I was actually support. playing uh, Eerie Statue deck yesterday. Nice, <laughs> my man. I love that card. Yeah. Did you also fall for the uh, Ben Brode Secret Priest? 
I did. Yeah, that deck's not good. I trust Ben. I would trust Ben Brode with everything. Definitely. If Ben Brode looked me in the eye and told me anything, I would trust it without a doubt, 100%. Yeah. If he told me, if Ben Brode came up to me and told me, TJ, and he put his hand on my shoulder, he said, TJ, on my way to work today, there was a pig mm -hmm. flying past me, and it pooped on me. It sounds legit. I would say I would legitimately feel bad for Ben Brode because I would 100% believe that a pig flew Sorry a that on. happened to you. That's really unlucky. Yeah. That happened to you, too. It happened to Ben Brode. Okay, so here we're just playing two one-drops. Yeah. I'm actually That's really curious about, about this tap. You like the Gormok? Yeah. Yeah. Because the Gormoks, we are probably never going to get to a point where If you missed one drop, you were in really bad shape. Did he just not play a Flame Imp? He did yeah. not play a Flame Imp. I mean, he can play it next turn with Argus. Wow. That's and, nice And level. the third health is really relevant against Ikop's two attack board. But... Ikop took board while holding a Lightning Storm. And coining a Doom Hammer. That's insane how weak Naaman's hand was. Yeah, this game's been a bit lopsided. But, that, I mean, we have to respect Naaman for that line of play, though. That's a really hard play to make. Yeah. Whether it's right or wrong, it, holding on to Flame Imp when you have yeah. one extra mana on that he, turn. He definitely had a plan. Yeah. And uh, it didn't work out, so it looks kind of stupid. Yeah. But it was a good plan. Yeah. Horse Rider is, like, one of the best cards you can have here. Yeah, it's Maybe. just, like, not good enough, though. Oh, well, the Counter Horse Rider. Is much better. Well, it's actually the same. <laughs> no, no, no. This one's better. When you're um, <laughs> when you're in the lead here, all you need is like something playable to, yeah. to lock out. Ah, the, the game. Finley was also really good. When you're behind, you need something absurd. Finley actually is probably. Ah, Finley's just as good. Like if the horse rider is six out of ten for both players, like Ikop's happy with six but, out of ten. But Finley, you can like start that. squeezing in that druid or that hunter repair, hero power and really start clocking him. But yeah, they're both this. Arjun Horse Rider is the same as Hunter Hero Power. Except yeah. you don't get a 1 3. You get a 2 1. Okay. Divine Shield. And that plays right into the Blood Knight. So Nyman's trying to figure out how he can set up a big Argus to stop this incoming damage. Probably involves Imp Gang Boss. Yep. There we go. And not the Flame Imp. <laughs> no. No. Taking 3 seems bad. Just trades with anything. Trades and with your opponent. Oh, well. That's, that's lethal. That's okay. just how you do it. Hey. He had a spell power totem for lethal as well. Because he had eight. Yeah. So six and damage. Lava burst. And the Finley? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Finley's almost always lethal. Out of three picks, you can miss, but very rarely. Yeah, that's true. True. You need ping. You, uh, need, you, you have to dodge warrior, ship, ship. priest, and. Is there another one that doesn't do anything? Rogue, because he'd have rogue, to. Rogue, yeah, yeah, rogue. Uh, but yeah, Ecop takes game number three, so he'll go up two to one in the series. And uh, Ecop's last deck is going to be Warrior. So uh, Naaman did go ahead and ban Warlock because he. Uh, Ecop, a lot of his... Ecop won. Ecop's chilling on Shaman. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Naaman has. Uh, Warlock, Warlock left. left, yeah. No, he just played Warlock. He has Shaman left. Shaman left. I was looking we, got there. we got there. We got there. We switch these around because we, we, the players are on those sides, so I don't get confused. We, we went ahead and named all the classes they were playing. <laughs> yeah. Until we got there. Yeah. Warlock and Warrior Band. I'm not going to tell for who because. So five minutes ago, Nymish was theme. like up a game and it looks like he was going to win the second game and just things have turned around dramatically. Yeah. yeah. So Naaman uh, has to win I mean, he's a playing mirror and then. And yeah, he's playing Aggro Shaman though. He can do it. Well, yeah, they're Anything's both are. possible. Anything is possible. Yeah. Ekop's so last deck would between be... Between Dagger Mastery, Lesser Heal, and Steady Shot here. Ekop still has Warrior, right? Yeah. Goes for Lesser Heal. What was um, Where did it reserve? Dagger Mastery and Steady Shot. So in the Aggro Shaman Mirror, it tends to be about value and board control oh. and not about yeah. uh, and a priest, race. And the reason for that is... affects the, the board and Hunter right. doesn't. Right, but Rogue and, also affects the board, but you but can't you already that have with Doomhammer Doom in hand. Yep. Yeah, so that makes sense. Um, the reason it's about board control and not about uh, a face race is because both players are playing Abusive Sergeants and Flame yep. Tongue Totems, so you're constantly incentivized to trade. Right. If I don't trade, he can punish me with the Abusive or the Flame Tongue, so I have to trade, and the other opponent, the opponent's thinking the same exact and thing, and you're both just trading the whole time. Doomhammer actually only does four a turn, and the four mana seven seven does seven, seven. a turn. Yeah. yeah, it's all about the board. Yeah. So if you can keep that healthy. And keep it. That being so said, you can actually just draw all the burn, and then you don't need burn. You don't need the the board, but that's like a 
a very specific example. Yeah. So here we see this exact logic applied. We yep. have to coin out the Rock Biter, because if we don't coin Rock Biter, Flame Tongue or Abusive gets yep. a value trade into our Tunnel Trog. We can't afford to risk that. Absolutely. Another thing is both players tend to use a lot of their resources early. Like, they empty their hands by, like, yeah, five. All yep. the one-drops. Yeah. Like, Life one Tap is actually one of the better ones from Finley in this matchup, although yeah. it is scary, because... Yeah, if you just have a bunch of one-drops, you got to play your cards really aggressively. And yeah, hope to get ahead in Snowball. Ooh. Ancestral Knowledge is... Yeah, it Naaman's is value, but at such a loss of tempo, and tempo can yeah. lead to value, right? Yeah. Naaman's running uh, the Elemental Destruction build with the 3-2 the Unlock Your Mana Crystals again. Underload, I like to call it. That makes sense. It's not Overload, it's Underload. Eternal Sentinel. Yeah. So... Three ping classes. Yeah, which one's best? I, that was I, the best with Doomhammer. Yeah, sort of represents that's the best Doomhammer even when with you don't Doomhammer. Have it. I actually would have been inclined to take Rogue. Yeah, that's kind of what because I was thinking. You, you, it is the best you save control without two mana yeah. for an additional hero bar. Yeah, you're, you're paying one a hero bar. Yeah. Speaking of and with knowledge, it's like intensive on mana. Speaking of Eternal Sentinel, did you guys know that when the, those cards were announced, Eternal Sentinel was the highest rated card of its set Boy, we were before wrong. release. We were really wrong. Was it along with Tunnel Trog? Uh, they were released at separate times, I okay. believe. Uh, Tunnel Trog came pretty early, actually. Tunnel Trog came with... I don't know exactly, but I, I know Eternal Sentinel was the highest rated one in the community. Because th back then, people were just so... were complaining about Overload, like, non-stop. Right. And so, people were like, gosh, I'm so El bad, and the reason why they're bad is because of Overload. Elemental Destruction had already been released, right? Uh, you know, I don't know. I believe so. Yeah. And like we, and like people had not fully realized the power of the Bog Creeper. I, I think uh, Tunnel Trog came. <laughs> so they got really <laughs> excited by another yeah. unlock your mana card, so you can play the Elemental Destruction. Yeah. Decks. Tunnel Trog came in LOE, yeah. and uh, Eternal Sentinel came with Old Gods. Okay. If I remember correctly, because Eternal okay, Sentinel's yeah. got a weird Old Gotty yeah. look. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, considering how many strong, like powerful cards were in Old Gods, it's really surprising that was the highest rated. So this is a terrible turn for Ecop. Um, he can Lightning Storm or he can Hero Power Pass, and both seem, I mean, you've got to Hero Power Pass, right? Lightning Storm's just too bad. If you roll low, you just lose the game, basically. Yeah. yeah. you got to, like, double roll high for it to make any sense. But then you're just playing Priest, though, and that just feels really bad. Yeah. I don't, I've si not a single player brought Priest. If, imagine that. If, in the format where Priest is at, like, last year's standing is where Priest is at its strongest. But it's still Priest, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a I'd, I'd like put money on like no one bringing bring Priest. I, like, I, actually like, I actually like Doomhammer here because of how well it sets up for Lightning Storm. If you play a minion, your opponent can trade their board into it and the Lightning Storm gets weaker. Yeah. And this being a value matchup... Uh, I I like your... You have two Doomhammers, I guess, but... With that Lightning Storm, you're also not developing anything, meaning that you re-give name and the initiative. Or, he, four mana, seven, seven plus heal still sets you up for Doomhammer next turn. This I like the five, five because like, it, like it forces uh, Naaman to actually trade into it, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a lot of cards. He might not actually have an answer. Whoa, Doomhammer's a big draw. Naaman sort of has the initiative here, and for him to have three power cards in hand, it's going to be tough for Ecop to come back. A few ways like, of, I feel like Ecop yeah. sort of needed Naaman to run out of gas to win the game, and so for Naaman to have just all high-value cards, it's going to be very difficult. There's a, there's a few ways of doing this. So he's setting up the Doomhammer next turn. Uh, yeah. Because you want a 7-7 seven, seven to contest his 7-7. Seven, seven. Now, I Ecop, to go face. No, we're still on, we're still on like this value argument, how, how this matchup works. And well, Ecop's, I think to beat down now. Ecop's just not in a position to value trade, right? He has to trade 7-7s. Seven, which keeps your little guys around, which pushes chip damage, which is really, which is a nice way of uh, right. getting that initial. Right. Damage. Nyman has the initiative. Um, Ecop has to, you know, play defense. Rolls high on the important one, I guess. The high one. Hey. Oh, that seemed really ineffective, though. Uh, that feels Have bad. you been playing Pokemon too? Me? What? Super how effective. is that question relevant? Oh, oh super effective. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I have not been playing Pokemon, but I know that one. Yeah. That's like old school Pokemon, man. That's why I Did know. that change? Yeah. 
Is uh, it, I don't, it, it doesn't you know, happen anymore. Is no. it no longer? Oh, no, it does say it. Yeah, when you're play, how, how do you fighting know? against a gym that has like a, a different element, like yeah, a, the you, element. How do you okay. know if things are super effective or not? I don't fight in gyms, man. I'm too weak. It, it needs to pop up a message and tell you if it's super effective. <laughs> it's just like a, a pat on the back. Good job. All right, so this is gross. Ecom just... He's just behind in so many ways. Yeah, uh, the lightning storm and the ferals is actually a pretty good turn. The thing Although is, Although the druid here. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah feral yeah. spirits normally semi-counters Doomhammer, or at least is awkward for the Doomhammer, but with the druid hero power, it's the opposite. How about you... Hot knife through How butter. about you Doomhammer? Hope you're not dead. Yeah, I mean, you could make some kind of argument for a lot of plays based yep. on, like... You do have... You, it's not about like dying slower, right, uh, and staying around in the comp in the in the game. It's just like two off lethal here. How you one win. off? I think, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You want to miss the two power? Yep. Yeah. That's at six plus. Uh... Wait, no. Is it lethal? Because hey, uh, we can just use our board into the five, and then it's uh, twelve to the five. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. That's exactly lethal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice spot. Chat. Good caster math. We did it. It only took us like the entire turn. Yeah, it took three of us. Listen, we figured it out right around the time Naimi did it, so obviously... I get, I get confused when sh two shamans are playing each other and neither of them are making totems, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's not my fault. <laughs> that confused you. Okay, well, we're tied up now. Yep. And the Ekop has two. his warrior left. So it's warrior versus shaman. Uh, Ekop had a uh, dragon warrior, right? Yeah. Um, that it tends to be favored against shaman. Yeah. Yeah. It's Dragon warrior doesn't tend to be favored against shaman. No? Alex Raza's champion killing Tunnel Trog. That's favorable. Yes. It also kills Feral Spirits. When that doesn't happen, the matchup's actually a lot closer ever. Well, if you have Fiery War Axe, like... Like, like there's, there's a general win rate for the matchup, which is very favorable for Dragon Warrior. Oh my god, but look at it that also hand. Includes, what about with this hand? It also includes a 100% win rate when Alex Raza jamming kills Tunnel Trog. We're very close to that. Right. A very, very high win rate. But, like, Alex Raza's champion doing that is sort of similar to it, Fiery War Axe doing that? Yeah, it's just like, Naaman's hands is actually just better. Naaman? did get the right kind of hand, and yeah. Akop mulliganing the slam. Slam actually would have been pretty good against Naaman's hand because he yeah. needs that fourth or, I guess, fifth damage to deal with these totem bombs, exactly. right? Blood yes, for Iker, the Fiery War Axe. Yeah, Blood to Iker would be a better way to do it. Um, I think it, it made sense to mulligan it. Um, he was looking for a card like Frothing Berserker, but with us having the benefit of seeing Naaman's hand, we know it may not work out as well. Yeah. So here, I, I would probably coin Alex Strauss' champion to the face because I have Fiery War Axe into Frothing as follow-up. Maybe. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Your, your opponent missed one. You're expecting the totem going to come out, right? Right. Naaman did keep a card off the mole. Okay, so what's hey, our plan? It wasn't a one drop. Is... Therefore, it is totem no, going. No, he full mulligan. He full mulligan. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. He got he double totem going. everything. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, he's just very talented. Yeah, he did good. Yeah. And I mean, look at Naaman's curve. He can totem golem on two and then totem Eternal golem. Sentinel Lightning Bolts. That's one way of doing it. I wouldn't do it that way, given there's a Doom Hammer involved, though. Yeah, you want to totem golem the, to the totem second golem. to because yeah, the second totem golem never gets played if you play it because you can't play it on four anymore, yeah. right? That that's so it has to be the totem golem totem golem curve. That's only but if he no plays. one's complaining about yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. So this is a big turn. Yeah. Uh, How are we dealing with that three three against three four tensions? So yeah, it's favorable. It's awkward, but I think you swing the war axe at it and go face for three. Yeah, sounds right. Make him deal with make him trade the three one into our three three. Yep. If you represent, you represent, you represent, yeah, you represent Ravage Goal if you don't have it. Your opponent has to make that trade, so you get a free, a free, free damage. In. It's sort of not a strong representation, but it's something you have to fear, right? Like you, you kind of have to respect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have to respect Doom Hammer is probably the worst draw in his deck here since he already has one. Yeah. It's hard to go through eight charges and then need more. Maybe, Somebody's gonna die. Maybe you just make the read. And you're just like, no, I'm, go I'm gonna dome you. Yeah. I, got, I got these Doom Hammer guards. No, I, that's I like really, this play that's from Nightmare. That's such a hard read to make, right? It's, it's not a real, it's not a hard read. It's just it's not, not a real a read. read. You're just it's guessing. A, it's a, oh, I can see your monitor read. Okay, yeah. So Finley actually is a good way to find that fourth damage we need here and, yeah. and make this uh, turn much more efficient. We still can play That's one way turn. of doing it. The other way would be the Lightning Bolt, then unlock the Crystal, and then play to the Finley. Yeah, but then you don't get to Hero Power, right? No. I'm trying to be efficient here with my cards. Right. I don't think you need value. I think you need to kill your opponent. Okay. Shape shift. And shape shift is better with that, Doom Hammer. You, you so develop you trade first. The other way of doing this, you develop the the extra three two, mm -hmm. which uh, doesn't mean that much. But the War X can only swing at one of the two three twos at the end of this turn. Right. So, just another way of thinking about it. 
Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, it's like the value play versus the tempo play. This yep. is the value play you're talking about, the tempo play. Yep. And, uh, I don't know, any damage you, any additional uh, damage that you push because of the tempo play is so rewarded because you have Tomb Hammer in your hand. Mm -hmm. And you, you just more that damage. You're going to start killing him really quick. Wow, he sequences it this way. He puts an extra damage on his Totem Golem. Yeah, that's to save some life. Huh. But the life has value because he has all these Doomhammer charges that he can trade with. I, I think he might have just actually just figured out if he gets 9-9 nine nine on 6. What's the lowest odd of getting 9-9 nine nine on 6? Oh, is that what he's doing? Because he's going to take 6 here. That puts him to 17. No, he'd be at 16. I don't know. Yeah, the 9-9-6 nine nine is threatening because there's no hex, so just how do you ever deal with that? Or maybe but, trying to bait out a Ravaging Ghoul instead of a stronger play? He's not trying to bait out a Ravaging Ghoul because it's not like he has Forbidden Ritual in hand. Like, his hand doesn't want to see sick. <laughs> but it's a but right no, that's a weaker sick. play. It's a weak play. You, you think? don't want your opponent to play three six, so you bait the goal. Okay. Okay. You think that you makes bait, sense? Yeah. You bait your opponent to punt. It's certainly a play. Come, Purple thinks it's a good play because he likes to mind games. Yeah. No, it's like if you make a, a play that can lead your opponent to make a suboptimal play, it's actually a play. Sure. It, it's just like it's like weird. You can lead your opponent to water, but you can't make them play a ravaging goal. You know the old saying? That, yeah, is that what it is? I think so. New or Old Testament? <laughs> <laughs> the Og so, Testament. I mean, are we just going to play Doomhammer and not attack with anything? Or? Yeah, that seems like the play. If you, if it's you it's really it awkward. You have to... If you hit it twice, you're killing yourself rather quickly. Yeah. Dragon Warrior can just go face. They do have that Draconid Crusher. It's pretty much a face deck with a Deathwing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dump your hand, and if that doesn't work, Deathwing. Backup plan. Oh, we're oh we're good. Oh wow, that's painful. Now this is a little bit. In okay, once. Okay. Wow. Uh, so if, so if it trades into the one three, there's lightning bolt, um, or or just hero power. Uh, if I back up, I'm going face with that. Well, yeah, there's a corrupt here anyways. Yeah. Little yeah. glare on the screen. Oh, we're just gonna get him all the way to fourteen. I love it. Yeah, I mean it. It sets up to uh, play a nine nine next turn. And Agro Shaman just doesn't have a good answer to that. Yeah, Nameless is dead. So can we... You can Rock Biter clear, but how do you deal with the 9-9? Nine -nine? You're playing Agro Shaman. Well, what if we go something like uh, Lightning Bolt, Trade... Something can, involving Lightning Bolt, Eternal you, Sentinel... You, uh, so Rock Biter's happening. Hero Power. Lightning Bolt there. Yeah, yeah we Lightning Bolt the 5-4, then we Eternal Sentinel. The 5-4 is not dying. We're going face here. Yeah, or else he would have just lightning bolt on the... Yeah, on yeah. The he's just going face. He's going for some kind of lethal. So, so he's going to... He's six this turn he down has, to 18. Yeah, he has 12. So he's at 18. So if his opponent 9 nines him, he just dies to second rock fighter. Yeah. He has that's draws a, for lethal as a... That's his certainly a play. Nothing. That's a play. So that yeah, might, I mean, when you're not... A, body, make an aggressive line. Absolutely. Makes sense sometimes. So that forces Ecop to trade. Does it? Well, okay, so he thinks that he I can play. He could reasonably play around one ro one rock biter, right? So if he has one rock biter plus the damage on board, how much damage is that? Well, rock biter plus, plus board, he just needs two. <coughs> two is make, lethal here. Ecops okay. just gonna make the streaming play. And oh, that's it, right? Yeah. Five, six, the ten, twelve, fifteen, exactly 18. sixteen. No, twelve on board is ten. In hand is eight. All right. All right. Uh, 12 from um, Rockbiter um, plus Doomhammer plus Hero Power. Four from the board. Abuse of Sergeant's an extra. Oh, he so got that's, there. That's 18. Got there. That's exactly lethal, yep. Sick. Are you sure, though? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Naaman's name, no, confused like I am. I'm not, he's, <laughs> you know, no, he's just triple checking. He's like, I know I set this up, and I know it's yeah. lethal, but what if I'm a human and I did something stupid along the way? <laughs> yeah. All right, well. No, you got it, Naaman. Good job. Sick. That's going to be Naaman. He was Taken. a really rough spot. Just makes the comeback. Yeah, he he took the uh, the aggressive line of play, gave himself a chance to win, and got there. Yeah. He got had the option to trade Black and Corruptor into that 3-2 Eternal Sentinel. Obviously, it felt really bad. I can understand choosing to go face. It was Doomhammer plus anything, right? Yeah. Or Rock Fighter plus anything? Yeah. I kind of want to fall back up on that. Like, do Rock Fighter plus anything somewhat likely. Yeah, and he had a handful of... I mean, it's just... The argument for Ecop's aggression is that he knows he's dying yeah. to that yep. hammer Big plus hero power, and he's just turns. not setting up lethal if he doesn't. 
Yeah, so he wants to close out the game before yeah. the Doomhammer kills yeah. him off. So. Congrats, man. Thanks. The last game was uh, pretty tight. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Did you, uh, you just put yourself on an out to win with uh, Rockbiter? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I want to talk about Yogg-Saron for a moment. Yogg-Saron, yesterday I played it three times and I got uh, Yastral coming in twice. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this time, today, it's like 50 50 so far. So Sounds hopefully good. it's going to be better. Yeah. I mean, Astral Communion can sometimes be good because it oh. gives you your mana crystals back, right? Overall, the cards. Because uh, then, you, you, then, then you draw, draw more cards. Then you draw more cards and play then you can stuff. play more cards. Did no. you get that? Yeah. I mean, like, Astral Communion just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Except in the spot you double iterate it. Then, you're, then it's actually just good because your hand's empty. Yeah, and but, then you actually just have more mana to turn after. But not when you're a mage, man. Out there. All right. Well, um, why why'd you bring Tempo Mage? Because a lot of players didn't have the mindset to bring Tempo Mage. Was there like a specific deck that you had in mind, or I just like the Tempo Mage, especially like the way I built the deck mm -hmm. with the Emperor, Cabal Stone, yeah. and some you, other you decks. Seem, uh, you actually see, you're so conservative with the deck. Mm -hmm. You're just like I trust more my deck a whole lot more than Cabal Stone. You're just That's, like you have all the, you have a bunch of turns where Cabal Stone is so reasonable, and you're just like no my deck, please. I mean, like, you have two ways to play the Druid or to play the Tempo Mage. I rarely get Innervates or Wild Growth, and this is the reason I'm playing the Tempo Mage, because I get pretty often get the Mana Worm. Okay. The <laughs> no, it's, like a feel, it's a feel thing. It's like, I get Mana Worm more than I get Wild Growth, so <laughs> Tempo Mage it is. There's one player in particular I want to ask you about. Uh, you had four mana, a four mana Cabal's Tome, because you had Sorcerer's mm -hmm. Apprentice, I think, and you chose to play Spellbender instead. Can you walk, through, walk me through your reasoning from that turn? Do you remember it? I uh, don't really remember. Yeah, it was a long time ago, I understand. So yeah. It was like you, game you, one. You had uh, the sources on board, so you have a nine mana play, which is Blizzard, mm -hmm. Cabalist Tome, and you have a seven mana play and a ping that's mm -hmm. Blizzard, Spellbender. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, so you just play Spellbender over Cabalist Tome. Why do you think it's important to have a Spellbender developed against Druid? I think I remember, I remember I had mirror images on the table. Yeah. And this way I'm just going to kind of keep uh, my minions alive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, like, you protect yourself against swipe? Yep. Because, swipe, uh, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, that's a good reasoning. Um, let's see. Your, the rest of your group is... Uh, who do you play next? Oh, Eloise. Yeah, you have Eloise, Eloise Frodan, nice. and Eggcop in your group. Mm -hmm. uh, are you happy to face off against Eloise? Who do you think you had the better matchup against? Mm. Eloise or Frodan? I guess Eloise, I guess. Yeah. Well, that mm -hmm. works out for you, then. So, you think you're going to advance in first place? I'm not sure. I think it's going to be, like, uh, initially. The chance is, like, 50-50. So, mm -hmm. we'll see. Will you smile if you win Seat Story? Mm. He's almost smiling He's right smiling. now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the name of his smile. Yeah. You got him. He did it, Purple. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> I said that was the smile that you had when you won the Europe Championship. Oh, yeah, but it. Yeah, he did, he did a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then he ran right off the stage. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, uh, that was sweet, man. It touched my heart. But uh, um, I, I've asked everybody that says, come on, we haven't had a chance to interview you yet mm -hmm. since you played on the B stream yesterday. Yep. Um, what do you think of this new Shaman deck that's, that's popped up? This... Uh, Concede Shaman, the, the Bog Champ Shaman, what do you think? I thought it's Concede Shaman, but after watching the deck, the way it plays, uh -huh. I'm kind of getting scared of it. So, that you're, so yeah. What do you, think, you ban it? Uh, that's a secret. That's a secret, man. Yeah, because I might play Frodon. No, wait. Yeah, I might play against Frodon. So, yeah. Okay. Don't yeah. want to reveal it. Yeah. Well, that's a good strategy, man. Uh, but congratulations. Uh, you'll be moving on to the winner's match. So, you won game away from top eight. It's pretty yep. good. All right, well, uh, we have uh, three more matches left for Group B for the day. So uh, don't go anywhere, guys. More Seed Story Cup 5. Oh, nope, just kidding. Mini we actually have a mini, mini game. game ready. Heck yeah. So that's even Betty. That's even better. So uh, we're going to go over to the poker table or the game table. We're going to go over to something to play a game. All right, guys, welcome to another fun mini game. We're going to play uh, some Monkey Trouble here. And we have Raynad. And uh, Nymph for Team Horus. And uh, Force is now converted to Team Anubis, apparently. So uh, <laughs> you get a new badge as well, yes, of course. And you play together with, uh, who's your other who's member? Is it you, Stan? Yeah, I can. Okay. Okay, okay. apparently Stan's <laughs> playing with Force. All right, so we're playing some Monkey Trouble. And we're playing uh, for a lot of points, guys. So, so this one's big, because uh, the current uh, state is that Anubis has 3,683 points, while the Team Horus has 3,984 points, so that's uh, 201 point more, so... <laughs> so, Team Anubis uh, is going to have to pick this one up, so the winner of this point, of uh, this uh, game, will be awarded four points. Four points. Four points. So we can extend our lead. 
Yes, by four points. It's going to be a total of four points, which is a lot. Right. All right. You seem disappointed, or? I don't know. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah perfect. perfect. Good. All right, so the way this game works is, as you can see, there's a lot of monkeys in this, uh, let's call it banana tower. And uh, we have a dice here. We have the dice here. So there's a lot of colors on here that uh, obviously are different. So these guys are going to roll the dice. And whichever color they hit, they have to pull out the stick of that color out of here somewhere. Now, uh, monkeys are going to fall one way or the other at some point, and the objective is to have uh, the smallest amount of uh, monkeys at the end of the game. So the game stops when all the monkeys have fallen. Now, if one color is completely gone from the tower, but you rolled that color, you're in luck. So you don't have to pull out any of the sticks, and uh, the other team has to roll again. Okay, simple enough. Let's start this. So let's have a team Anubis start this one. Go ahead, Forsen. Converted. Converted. All right, it's a green one. So pick a green stick right there. Oh, actually, a monkey fell there. But not one to the bottom yet. All right. Right now, go ahead. Let's go, Forsen! Woo! Right, there's an orange one. Get an orange stick out of there. All right. Sand's going to roll for Team Anubis. An orange stick. Oh, there's, there's two monkeys on that one. Two monkeys on that one. Are there any monkeys on that? No, apparently not. All right. Let's just go ahead. Poor Team Morris. Pink. That's her color anyways, right? Let's see here. All right. Clinical. Clinical finish. Which color do we have? Pink again. Okay. All right, Raina. It's another pink. Pink, yes. Sand. Green. Yeah, this is a classic fatigue match. Go ahead. No, 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 no monkey on this one. So there's a total of 30 monkeys, by the way. So if the split goes 15 15, I guess we'll have to play again seems or like something. A, seems like a game design flaw. They should have 31. <laughs> well, it's 30 HP in total, right? So I guess that is. Oh, wow. All right. So the first monkey, the team horse. So at the end, who has uh, the smallest amount of monkeys wins. So right now you're behind. Woo! All right, Raina. Go ahead. Roll the dice. Orange. Orange. Oh wow, this this is stacked up here. That's going for it though. Tell the orange right. that there's no monkeys on it. It's not <laughs> right, green. Green for Stan. No monkeys right there. So obviously uh, right now there's still a lot of uh, branches where there's no monkeys on. Orange. But that's gonna change. The one on the bottom has one monkey. That doesn't seem to have there a monkey go. on. There you go, Inch. Very funny. Orange is the hardest color. Green, right? Wow, lucky. What is it? Pink. Pink. Pink for Anubis. All right, nice. there we go. Nice one. Woo! Anything but orange. Anything but orange, he says, and he gets a green. That's a safe one. Even if there's no monkeys on that branch, you actually have to watch out because if you tip other ones, you might get a monkey. Ooh, is there a monkey on that one? No monkey. Oh, uh, I have to be careful pulling out though. Let's go! Let's go finish. Green? All right. Green. Green. There's one on top. That one looks safe. All right, we're getting into the hard area now. Not orange. Not orange. That's an orange. Welcome to orange, boys. So at some point you get to that point where you have to cut your losses and just take the smallest amount of monkeys. Going for the top one, he hopes that they don't fall down. It's probably a pretty good strategy. You can still tip them into a certain direction for some. And falling off, but not in the fall down. Where they go? Oh, orange again. Or is the most hated color? Oh man. Oh, man. Maybe, maybe the orange stack in the middle, like, though. It's brutal. Just, just stick it bottom one, man. It's only one. It's only one, right? Only one on the bottom. Oh, safe play. It's boring. Safe play? I think I have to lose a monkey no matter what. I think we can take off the monkey. It's fine. It's only one monkey out of 30. Is there a way I can make this one slide onto the. Huh, looking forward. Fancy plays. Uh, 
You can tip it into a certain direction while pulling it out. There's no rules against that. Oh, one fell down. That's another monkey, 14 horse. Green. Green on top. That's a safe one. Rock and roll. Pink. There's not too many pink ones left. So there's only four left. Only three greens. And uh, only, uh, I think, three oranges as well. But actually, there's four oranges. But all of them have monkeys on. It's a pretty decisive one. In theory, I can take this one. Let's do it. All right, let's go on in. Oh, there is one monkey there. Oh, already tips one. And it's not even out yet. Ooh, that was so close. So only two, actually, because there was a lot more falling. <laughs> It's your turn, though, Mr. Green. All right, Forsen. Mr. Green. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Green's good. <laughs> so, you know, don't you want to trash talk your opposing team? I mean... I'll let the monkeys do the talking, man. I'll go for this one. Oh, no, that's fine. Oh, that's I'll go for that. Intense. So this way at least one's probably falling, unless he could drop it off on another branch, but he can't, so that's the first monkey. Uh, for Team uh, Anubis. So there's four monkeys right now for Team uh, oh, Horus, and one for Team Anubis. And another pink one. Each and every one's actually pretty brutal right now. So this Orange seems to be the best one of the choice at this point. This one? Yeah. I can I can switch them to the other one. If you can, do it. Mm. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. Just take this one monkey. One monkey should wow. Let's see if you can drop it off on another branch. We haven't seen any plays yet. Okay, dropping one. That's five monkeys. Green. Oh, green's getting brutal now. Actually, those look pretty good, in theory. Yeah, this Ah, dropping one. Oh my god. Orange! That's two for Team Anubis. That's the orange. Oh, you want orange. Yeah, orange is good. <laughs> There's over 20 monkeys in there still, guys. Oh, damn. Pink. Oh, man. Both of those are actually pretty bad. <laughs> Remember, you can shake them off to another branch. I think you have to take the top one and you just pray. You can shake them off. Oh wow. Oh my god, there's so many monkeys on this one. None have fallen yet. Oh, this is gonna be so close. It's two already, three. Four monkeys. Brutal right there. So Team Anubis far in the lead right now. Longing for those four points. Anything but pink. Orange. Yeah, I think this one. Orange. Alright. Couple losses. Another one for Team Anubis. Alright. What do we even want? Just re roll that one. <laughs> orange again! Orange shit. Orange is huh. A lot of oranges left. Uh, a lot of oranges left. No, don't make me that one. That's a video on Oh, that actually, yeah, that'll wreck me. Hmm. So there's probably not a single one you can actually send out with uh, getting any monkeys to your side. So there's nine monkeys already for Team Morris. How many more will there be after this orange branch? Wow, that was pretty good. Decent place. Pretty good. Now it's going to be hard for Team Anubis, and that one's pretty terrible. It's the bottom one. Oh my god. I mean, you can try flicking them up, I guess. That's going to be really difficult. You can't poke it back in. You can only... You can only put it out. Just pull it out. Wow, that's a lot. That's four, right? Four more. Alright, so remember, if you roll pink now, for example, you don't have to take a single one. Oh, so pink is the best. Yeah, so pink is the best for this point. And your opponent has to. It's green, orange, and pink left right now. Uh, we rolled that one. Oh, it's green. Yeah, it's green. Ah, come on. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's green. It's green? That's a green it's one. Inside, we roll. <laughs> Go for it. No, there is. Can, can I? I can't pull for him, right? I can't. I can't pinch. You can only pull him in one direction. You can only pull pull him in one direction, but you can flick him up. I think you pull there, and you have to like. This is what you have to do. Hey, listen. To this. Yeah, I put them up on that monkey. You put them on the monkey, yeah. Yeah. Like which one? Let's see. The, you can flick him up. Right this monkey right there. But you can only pull. Like you can't yeah. go. You can only go one direction. That's the rules. Only one direction. It's a good band. So tilt down now. Let it slide towards the end of the stick slowly. Catch it, all right, uh, up, and on top of the, I have to go above the monkey. You can only pull. There you go, above the monkey. You can only pull. Vince it. Oh. oh, that's one already. You can only pull. You can't go back, Nimsh. You can't go back. You can't go back. You can only pull. All right, GG. All right, GG. You can only pull. Oh, that's a lot of them. How many monkeys is that? So these are nine right here. How many do we have? It's more than 15 in total. No. Okay, now we have to recount. There's seven. Okay. This is monkey business. Let's count these. This is three, four, five. Oh god. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. And that's more. Fifteen. So that means Steve Anubis wins this one. And the total of four points goes to them. Pretty sick. Pretty sick right there. Now remember guys, you can also tweet for your favorite team. Of course, to, to give them another uh, four points, maybe, or even more. So just use the hashtag Team Anubis or hashtag Team Forest on Twitter to give them uh, five points for each tweet and two points for each retweet. Now, uh, Brandon, what went wrong there? I mean, you obviously uh, performed pretty horrendously, right? I dropped two monkeys, all right? <laughs> oh, oh. Out of 16. All right, Nimsh, I mean, you're going to have to defend yourself right here. What went wrong, man? Yeah, it's a, I think it's definitely an RNG here. So um, I was, I, I thought like we originally come to like with three people to this team, and I, I was really touched by the fact that uh, Forsen betrayed us and joined Team Anubis at the last point. So uh, like, they, they needed the best teams, you know. They were going under, and I'm the best player, so that's how it works in MMO. <laughs> so you should join team. us. I, I definitely suck at this game. I will step it. I will step it up. Next time we play this monkey game, I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna come back. All right, great. So we're going to come back after this uh, short break as well for the next match. It's going to be the winner's match of Group A. It's going to be Naaman versus Eloise. That's going to be pretty fun. Don't go anywhere, guys, after the short break.